Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to show you how you can add extensions onto Stylus so that you can have all sorts of additional functionality for things like additional mix ins to functions that you can use to entire grid frameworks. Uh, there is a ton of extra stuff available for Stylus, and it's all really cool. So, we're going to get started in this video by installing Nib. And in the next video, we're going to show you a little bit more about what Nib has to offer. So, let's get going on that right now. So the first thing we need to do to install an extension into Stylus is really just install the node package itself. So when we installed Stylus in the first place, we installed it using npm and we typed npm install Stylus. Now again, we're going to have to do that. We want to install nib globally on our system. Now, there's lots of ways that you can use something like Nib. You could actually use it within your build process. So you could have uh, Grunt or Gulp taking care of your Nib and, and requiring it that way. Since we're not using a build process for these videos, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use Nib within the stylus watch command. And then upon other videos after this, we're going to go over the process of specific plugins for Gulp or Grunt. So let's get into it by heading over to our terminal. And we have our npm command. Since I'm installing this globally, I know that on this Mac system that I need to use sudo. So I'm gonna type sudo npm install, and then we're going to install nib, nib, and then hyphen g. So it's going to install it globally on your system. So that's nib once again, and we can hit enter. It's going to ask for your password if you're using sudo, and it's going to go ahead and grab the latest version of nib and install it. So as you can see, the latest version is 1.1.0 at the time of making this video, and it's gone ahead and installed nib in our system. So now is the time to use nib in our stylus watch command. I'm not watching anything currently. I've stopped the watch process by doing command C uh, if you need to stop your watch process. If you're not watching already, then you can go ahead and just type this command as stylus space. And then now here comes the part where we tell stylus that we want to use nib. So we can say space hyphen u, which is saying this uses space nib. And then the rest of the command is the exact same. So hyphen w style.styl. So simply by saying u our hyphen u and then nib, you're letting stylus know that you're going to be using this additional package. And we can hit enter. And you'll notice off the bat, nothing is really happening any differently besides uh, the fact that it's watching this user local nib folder in here. Uh, however, nothing in our document's really going to be changed and we can't actually use any of the features of nib just quite yet. So what we need to do next is actually import this. And this might seem uh, totally familiar if you're used to using extensions in SAS. So a lot of this process is very similar to what you do for something like SAS. Now we can say add import and then in quotes, all we have to type is nib, just like that. And instantly nothing's really happened, but let's go ahead and use a nib mixin. So some of the things that nib comes with are mixins that help make your life easier. If you've used something like compass, you'll know that it includes all these great CSS3 uh, mixins that include browser prefixes and stuff like that. And sometimes the mixins are just a easier syntax to writing something. Well, just to make sure that nib's working here, we're going to go ahead and just use a gradient mixin. And so to do that, we're going to come to our body here and I'm going to type background and we don't need the colon. We can type linear hyphen gradient and then in parentheses we're going to say it starts at the top and it goes from white to black. So that's top comma white comma black just like that. And you'll notice in our CSS over here now, we not only have the background linear gradient uh, top with the hex value and bottom with the other hex value, white and black there, uh, we also have gotten WebKit background and Moz background. 
So it's bringing in these prefixes and we never wrote a mix in to do that for linear gradient. So this is one of the features that Nib is bringing in for us. In fact, we'll be able to delete the CSS3 mixins we already created in the previous examples and just use Nibs because they're going to include all of our prefixes for us. And the great part about uh, Nib and Stylus as opposed to something like SAS, if you're using these mixins, they're transparent, right? We don't have to say at include uh, and then the mix and name and pass it properties like a function, we can simply just uh, define this like a normal CSS property here, saying background linear gradient, uh, and Nib will recognize that and Stylus will recognize that and compile it correctly for us. Cool, so we now have our first Stylus extension installed. And let me tell you, there's some absolutely great Stylus extensions. And I'll be showing you all of my favorite extensions and how they can make your workflow and process that much better. So check it out in the next video. We're gonna go a little bit more in depth with Nib and show you what's included there. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.